What's the scariest you've ever acted towards another human being, part two? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account one. When I was in eighth grade, I got in an after-school snowball fight with two sixth grade brothers who did not get along with me. Things escalated a little quickly, and one of the kids jumped on my back trying to choke me. I grabbed him by the hair and pulled him over my shoulder and threw him on his back and immediately planted my fist on his face. That ended the fight. But a few minutes later, they come back with their babysitter who proceeds to yell at me about how much trouble I'm about to get in. Fuck that, says eighth grade me. I return to the school, put on my best innocent crying face, and tell the principal that the kids had jumped me. And when I threw him off, he hit his face on a rock and how guilty I was. Long story a little shorter. The kid's mom ends up believing my story over her little shits and makes me cookies as retribution. The look on this kid's swollen face when he handed me a tin of cookies the next day will always stay with me. TLDR, punched younger kid in the face, his mom makes me cookies. Account 2. When I was in college in upstate NY, I lived in a nice apartment about 15 minutes from campus. My girlfriend and I lived in the first floor and things were good. One day in the winter around noon, I was in my office room as my girlfriend was getting ready in the bathroom. I heard a loud slamming noise coming from the living room which was right next to my office, assuming it was one of my cats being an idiot. I walked to go see what they might have knocked off a table. I walk into the room to find myself staring into the eyes of a stranger who had climbed through my window and looked to be ready to grab my TV. He scrambled back out of the window, and without thinking, I let out some kind of primal war scream and kicked him in the leg, hoping to break it by slamming it against the wall as he straddled the windowsill. Then I literally kicked him in the ass and pushed him out, forcing him to fall onto the driveway pavement. I then leaned out of the window screaming, I know what you look like, and fumbled words together out of pure rage that nothing I said made sense. Never found the guy, but I terrified myself, as I am not one to want to harm anyone else. Couldn't sleep right for a couple weeks. Account 3. When my son was about two months old, I was driving home from getting a few groceries. A girl who looked about 17 or 18 ran a red light, almost hit the side of my car, my son's car seat was on. I ended up turning my car around to follow her. She pulled over about five minuets after I began following her. I got out of my car, walked over to her. Hey, you really need to be more careful driving. You almost hit me. So my newborn son is in my car. You almost hit us. That could have killed him. I don't care. I had never punched someone out of anger before that. I never have since. I don't even know where it all came from. I'm female, relatively small, generally a passive person. She got a bloody nose, cried. It's ironic that I'm posting this immediately after a comment about how serious an offense assault is. Account 4. The stupidest and scariest thing I ever did was for my boss. She had been stalked by this guy for a while. This can happen when you work retail, but he was going all out. He was following her to bars, etc. She was pretty terrified. And then he went off and applied to work at the store. Clearly, she wasn't going to hire him, but I asked for the number. I called him up and told him I was the RM and wanted to give him an interview. He came in. I clocked out. I went to the back and took a long waterfall, hanger, those long ones with the heavy ribs to hold t-shirts on, and shoved it up my sleeve. When we got outside, I told him she was my girlfriend. He said this was cool, but I told him that no, no, it wasn't. Because I knew he'd been following her, I shoved him against the wall and told him if he so much as looked at her again or tried to breathe the same air as her again, I would make the hanger his new boyfriend. He just sort of nodded, terrified. I told him to leave, and when he walked off, I shouted that he wasn't going fast enough. Also, I'm a girl. Account 5. In response to a theater class assignment of performing a monologue that evokes an emotional response, I memorized Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky. I asked my teacher about a week ahead of deadline if I could perform early. He said I was free to perform whenever I was ready. I thanked him and sat down. It wasn't until three days later that I actually did something. Halfway through class, I started scribbling furiously, writing one word of the poem on each piece of paper, 
and then throwing it off my desk. My teacher knew me well enough to understand what was happening. But one student became the unlucky participant in my performance. She picks up the papers and reads them aloud. Taws, Brillig, and the Slithery. And I jump in shouting at the top of my lungs, staring wide-eyed and furious from my desk. Twas Brillig and the Slithy to this did gyre and gimbal in the wave. I continued the poem standing slowly and getting closer into her face, stepping closer and forcing her back all the while getting quieter but no less enraged. I kept it up until she is sitting in her seat leaning as far back as possible until I get right up against her ear and whisper the last line, I ask in my best Davy Jones impression. Do you fear death? When she nods, I take a step back, take a bow and announce, Scene, I got a 100. On the assignment, TLDR. I scared the living shit out of a girl with a psychotic recital of Jabberwocky to get an A on a theater assignment. Account 6. I was thinking about this the other day and still wonder what the fuck was going through my mind when I did it. I was about 17, 18 at the time. This was over five years ago. I was nearing the end of a relationship which had taken a turn for the worst. A girl I had loved and been gentle with since the beginning, but now she was becoming obsessive. Sometimes violent with me? It came to the point where I was always in the wrong. Anyway, I was driving down a long stretch of road one day with her. She was going on and on at me about something and changing a song on the CD player because it reminded her of something bad and generally not shutting the fuck up, I snapped. I began to drive on the wrong side of the road and gradually began to speed up. At the time, I knew there was nothing coming the other way, but it was still a stupid thing to do. I started screaming at her, telling her to shut up. I didn't want to hear any more of her stupid fucking remarks anymore that she was a bitch and I'd kill us both if she carried on anyway. She shut up. But what the hell was I thinking? I was lying on my bed the other day, the image of that happening in my mind, and feeling depressed as fuck about it. I eventually snapped out of it, but it shows how far guilt is willing to follow you, even after five years. Account 7. My housemate decided she was letting these two 18-year-old guys stay at our house. She comes home early and turns her phone off. They come home later from their night out. 5 a.m. to be exact. 5 a.m., doorbell is ringing to fuck. Not a, it's late, so I'll ding it a few times, just fucking thronging of bells as one of these two dickheads mash the button. I am livid. My window is directly above the door. So I stick my head out and ask them what the fuck they are doing. They explain the situation. I tell them I'm not letting them in. I've never met these fuckers in my life. And to fuck off back to their own house or ring my housemate, not knowing she had turned it off. Ding dong motherfucker, skinny fat and freckles. Glasses are going mad on the bell again. My heartbeat is through the roof and I'm storming the stairs like it's D-Day. And a German fucked my wife. These two guys are stood looking straight up at where they think my head's going to pop out this window again. They freak when the door busts open to me, streaming a great plume of breath into the cold, into their faces. Because what they didn't see from just my head sticking out of the window is that I'm a 6'2". 2.30 LBs, broken-nosed, hairy-chested, weightlifting rugby player. I am wearing nothing but the tightest of briefs, and I'm shaking with anger as these two young bucks recoil, realizing that I'm not some rosier-cheeked friend of a friend, but a warrior woken long from slumber by errant fools. Who disturbs me in this late hour? I cry wildly to the night. The two taking steps back hurriedly. I advance. You think of me as your servant. Mine domain your own, to hush you into my keep after such treatment. Their voices quiver in disbelief as I grasp their throats with large, rough hands. They want it into this house. Now all they do is plead for me to let them leave. Addendum, the end never happened. The first half of this is actually true. And I basically opened the door on these kids, threatened to break one of their arms, and they ran away and then apologized through my housemate the next day, I just kind of got bored and started making shit up that sounded fun. Account 8. When I went to public school, this kid from my class kept annoying me, slightly bullying, but nothing major. But it just kept building up, and he got more and more on my nerves. He was a pretty annoying kid, and I wasn't his only target. 
Then one day after school, when we were in club, it's a place most kids go after school at that age, until their parents come home. You just hang out and play and such. I had built this awesome sand castle, and I was kind of proud of the fucking thing. Guess who shows up? The annoying jackass, and he promptly destroys it. That was the final straw, and I decided that I've had it with his shit. So I went full-on psycho, mode, tackled the dude. He was a large, fat kid. I was a skinny kid. Then firmly placed my hands on his neck, strangling the bastard. I kept going for a long time, could see the blood rushing to his face, but he couldn't get me off, nor was anyone trying to help him or pry me off. I decided to stop before he passed out, though. Ran out of the club and went home. The next day he came up to me and apologized for his behavior. I was rarely bothered again. Only happened one other time by another kid from another class. I promptly proceeded to beat the kid up and spit in his face before things escalated. TLDR don't fucking mess with my sandcastles. Account 9. I'll do it in short. I boxed since I was 6. When I was 18, I beat up a guy so that he can only see 20. On his left eye, has epilepsy, walks with a cane, and has only four of his real teeth still in his mouth. I broke his jaw, his left eye socket, and seven of his ribs. Notice, I know him all my life. He's always been a prick and has always been violent with women, and this was not the first time he got beat up for it. He had a fight with his mother, beat up her and his little sister, went out, got drunk as fuck, and raped my best friend, breaking her jaw in the process. I sat 11 months in Lepoglava, Croatia. Google it, one of the Balkans' worst prisons, and he never sat a day in his life for the shit he did. And to all those people out there who hate me for it, I'd do it again. Account 10. I caught a guy trying to take my wallet that was sitting on the table next to me. I slammed his hand, and he let go. Then he tried to hit me. I caught the wrist of punch, and I pulled him into an arm lock. His arm was twisted behind his back, and he yelped in pain. Then I pushed his head into a nearby desk and pinned him there, like he was being arrested over a car. I told him that if I caught him trying to take another person's stuff again, I'd beat the shit out of him and call the cops. Then I craned him up and tossed him aside, where he knocked his knee against a table leg and ran away. My friends saw the whole thing and think I'm an amazing badass. The truth is, I just didn't want him to see some of the embarrassing stuff in my wallet. Account 11. This was the first fight ever got into. This happened back in junior year of high school. I was walking back from lunch with my friends, and there was this one kid who I just didn't like. Tried to act tough all the time. Huge ego. Never knew when to shut up, etc. We were walking, and out of nowhere, he tries to throw a snack-sized Lay's potato chip bag at me. Empty. Wind came by, and it hit him straight in the face. By coincidence, I also had an empty bag and rolled it up. Walked in front of him and gently let go, and it hit him in the face. At this point, he's furious, and we were just walking up the portable classroom ramp to get to class, and all I remember is him throwing a punch at me, I dodge it, and my immediate reaction was to throw one back, and he gets knocked to the ground. I think it's over, my heart racing, hoping no school officials saw it. And this guy gets up and take a fucking brisk can and tries to slam it into my face. Now I'm thinking, dear God, he's fighting dirty now, and dodge again, throw a punch, and this time we're inside the portable classroom. At this point I'm thinking, there is no way he's going to try anything, the teacher is 20 feet away, but to my amazement he gets back up, I think, okay, what can I do to stop him but not hurt him? He's charging at me. I grabbed both of his shoulders and yelled, I just knocked you down twice. What makes you think you have a chance this time? He sits down. I sit down. He gets up five minutes into class. Doesn't come back until the last ten minutes. Looking like hell. Face kind of swollen. And I get a congratulations from the teacher. I also broke the bone right beneath my pinky on my right hand. I'll post pictures if this gains enough interest. TLDR. Punched it twice. Yelled at him to make him have an epiphany and broke a bone in my hand. Account 12. When I was 21, I was a student sharing a large house with six other guys. Many evenings, a few of us would gather in the living room and play board games or card games on the floor. Most of the guys were good people. Though I shared the top story of the house with the one asshole in the bunch, he never paid his share of the utilities. 
He made a point of playing bad music very loud on mornings he suspected anyone else of being hung over. He never knocked before barging through anyone else's closed door, even though he became irate if someone entered his room without permission, etc. Fortunately, he was also a twerp in every sense of the word. Not a medical dwarf, but far smaller than any of the rest of us. We were all actors to some degree, and he briefly held down an announcer's job at the radio station, where I did the same thing, while trying to argue for some new interpretation of the rules to a game we had played dozens of times before. He took to yelling. I guess he thought he could intimidate the rest of us into simply agreeing to give him a huge advantage. I patiently let him shout in my face for a good minute or two. Then I literally sat on my hands before leaning toward him and demonstrating what a full-sized set of pipes sounds like at top volume. Between the fact that I continued to argue against him and the way my voice dramatically exceeded his best efforts at being loud, something snapped, his little hands were on my throat, squeezing hard. Even if I wasn't near death's door, I knew long-term damage could be done if he kept applying pressure where his thumbs were bearing down. Yet my hands were not readily available for retaliation. I did the only thing I could think to do, roll backwards while kicking out with my legs. Because the wee tyrant kept his grip on my throat for much of this roll, the extension of my legs caught him in the chest or stomach. In the next instant, he was flying up and away, still rotating a little from the shared roll as well. In comical fashion, with his feet toward ceiling and his head near the floor, he smashed into a wall 2030, away. It was probably my adrenaline distorting time, but it really seemed like he clung to the wall for a moment before sliding down and bonking his head on the floor. Having ripped his shirt in the process of launching him away from me, the little jerk had the temerity to start talking about cops and lawsuits as he rose to his feet and started back toward me. Fortunately, there were at least four witnesses who saw that I only made one hostile move, and that was after his grip was firm on my throat, I was tempted to mock him. But he looked too pathetic being restrained by our mutual friends and ranting about my unprovoked attack. I haven't been in anything resembling a physical fight since that evening. Yet I was both relieved and a little proud that this profoundly obnoxious guy was uncharacteristically polite and deferential to me whenever our paths crossed after that night, TLDR. While arguing about the rules of a board game, a housemate of mine actually tried to strangle me. I was sitting on my hands to make clear I intended no physical harm, so I could only dislodge him by rolling away and kicking. The end result was a comical human catapult that sent him into the far wall of a large room. Account 13. Female here. I was at a dance in college with some of my girl, friends just having a good time. I had a guy come up to me and just started grinding on me. I politely and verbally declined, but he wouldn't back off. So I just shouted over the music, I've got a dick. Dude instantly backed off, mission accomplished. Account 14. I was at our town's yearly festival and was there with my neighbor. We were there as friends and nothing more. I overhear these kids that pass by and say, wow, he's with her inside. I just blew up. I cannot stand when people make judgmental statements or talk down to anybody. I turn around and ask, what was that? One of the kids says, why are you with her? Is she fucking you? About half a second after he said that I lunge at him and punch him as hard as I could, down. On the ground with his hands over his nose, his friends ran after I hit him. I lean over and say, never. Will you judge or say anything about her again? He got up and went over to the porta potty to clean up, which isn't a good place to wash anyways. I apologized to her and we enjoyed the rest of our night. Account 50. Now is my time to shine. I had an apartment really close to the bar. It was a Friday night and I had just worked 60 hours that week and was not interested in going out. My cousin, on the other hand, was dead set on going out to the bar that night and wanted me to go with him. I respectfully declined many times, but he was persistent. About 20 minutes after I finished telling him no on the phone, I hear a knock at my door. Now, to describe my apartment. The staircase went up the outside of the building with all the door accessible from the stairs. There were no hallways or none of that. 
My front door led right outside. So I answer the door. It's my cousin and his friend. They're begging me to come out to the bar with them. I keep telling them no, and eventually they leave. I watch TV for a bit, then head to bed. End of story, right, wrong. I wake up suddenly to voices yelling and counting down from three. My bedroom is right next to the front door, so I can always hear drunk people hanging out outside, still half asleep. And I don't really know what's going on. Then they get to one, and I hear this huge bang. Sounded like someone blew something up. It's about 3 a.m. I jump out of bed, awake as fuck, and open my bedroom door. It's my cousin and his friend, and they have just booted open my front door. I was livid. I grabbed my cousin by his throat and threw him outside. I was going to knock both of them out right then, but my cousin's friend told me to calm down, and they backed away slowly. Up the stairs, I thought. Why the fuck are they going upstairs? Well, apparently my upstairs neighbor was having a party. And when my drunk cousin and his drunk friend came to wake me up, they went up to my neighbor's house to party and tried to impress some girls by kicking in my front door. I've never been so mad in my life. I was pacing back and forth with clenched fists and swearing, contemplating what to do next. I was going to call the cops, but it was family. So after about two hours, I calmed down enough to go to bed. Morning comes and I get a chance to look at damage. The whole frame of the door exploded off the wall and the door was unable to lock or fully shut anymore. I drove over to my cousin's house, got his sorry ass out of bed and told him to fix my door. Unsuccessful, of course, eventually a maintenance guy came and had to replace the whole door and frame.